Anyways, how's your day first? Um, my day's doing good. Good? Keeping you're you're busy? Good. Okay, so uh, let's talk about your new role, I guess. Uh, big push for The Last Ship. Last I mean, ship, yes. um, what character are you playing uh, this season? I play a regional leader by the name of Manuel Castillo on, on this upcoming season of The Last Ship. And it's a character that reports directly to President Michener, who was played by Mark Moses. Mm -hmm. What is he, like a politician, or is he like a rebel leader, or what's he going on? He is, by just pure natural selection, because you know the show, the basis of the show is there's a virus that's hit the world, and it's killed off 85 to 90% of the world's population. So the U.S. government, along with other world governments, are very fractured. And my character falls into this role of, of regional leader based mostly on natural selection because he was immune to the, the virus or it's not clear if he was immune or was vaccinated against the virus. But everybody who he reported to has died. Just like President Michener was, I think, number 12th in line to the presidency um, because he fell into that natural selection. He fell into the role of president. My character is the same, uh, who, without giving away too much of the storyline, I end up being a regional leader for a region, and those leaders end up becoming leaders because they were able to keep their area together, they were able to keep their people safe, keep rioting at bay, um, you know, and, and so they, they fell into that leadership position. Absolutely. Did they specify what region that uh, you're in charge of? They have, but it's crucial to the storyline, so I'm, I'm un unable to really confirm or deny that. No hints whatsoever. <laughs> no. <laughs> no spoilers here, no, unfortunately. Uh, how many episodes did they uh, sign you on? I think it was, what, about six? Well, the, the season is slated for 13, and, and I'm in six of those episodes. Oh, half, half the season. Yeah, almost half the season, yeah. So uh, does your character play a very major part, it sounds like, right? Well, every, but every character on the show plays an integral part. I mean, there's some... There's, there's almost two storylines going on simultaneously, and, and my stuff takes place with respect to the governmental side, the, the, the bureaucracy. And then there's stuff that's happening on board the ship and in, in other parts of the world. Uh, for example, um, the, the ship Nathan James, they discovered the cure. They're trying to now distribute that cure worldwide. And it becomes clear to President Minchner that he's gotten reports that the, in China that the, the cure hasn't been getting there. Either hasn't been getting there or the virus has mutated, which could mean even more problems for the world. So he sends uh, the captain, played by Eric Dane, he sends him over to China to a summit to try and find out what is really going on in China. So he's also stepped into now a different role where he's no longer the captain of the ship. Now he's the, basically the liaison. The liaison. And then we find out what's, ha what's really going on in China. If in fact the cure is there, if in fact the virus has mutated, and then what is going on back home with the regional leadership and the government of the United States, how they're trying to move forward and still maintain this democracy. Yeah, I've seen the first couple episodes of it. I think you appeared in the second episode. Second, oh, you did? You did see it? Yeah. Well, I, I didn't know that it there because they had postponed it. No, they did postpone it. I, I just saw a preview of, ah. of, of it and I think, I think you were briefly in there, so I think they're setting you up for a much, much bigger role. Yeah, Stephen Kane, the, the writer, the creator and producer of the show, the writing of the show was so amazing. And, and having been in the military myself, they definitely represented the Navy in the military correctly. And the storylines that they create within that world is, is phenomenal to me. I was uh, really proud to have been a part of the season. Yeah, but your character is much more like a, seems like much more of a politician. Isn't he? Right. And that, again, it's, it's a question of whether or not he's in that position of authority or, or position of leadership. If it's self-serving, if he's really trying to represent those people that are in his region, 
it, that there's a question there of that. And, and throughout the season, you start to find out what his intentions are. If his intentions are true, if he really is looking to help rebuild this government, or if there's a much deeper um, agenda. Well, tell me this. Are you going, is your character going to um, see some action or is it just going to be a political adversary? Hmm. Well, there is quite a lot of sparks that happen within the meetings that take place either in the Oval Office or, you know, I think in the second episode that you said you saw that um, there's, there's a lot of conference calling going on between the president and the regional leaders. So that in itself sets up what's to come in the later episodes. Um, God, there's just so much. <laughs> not to say that giveaway storyline because, you know, I really think it, it's, it's an exciting show to watch. And there's going to be some twists and turns that many people won't see coming. Um, you know, as with, with most shows out there, they try and definitely surprise the, the viewers. Oh, goodness. It, let's just say that this character definitely will have something to say in, in episodes to come. You are, you are a true veteran. I mean, you're very tight-lipped. <laughs> I am, yes. I just, I, I, I'm excited to see what they've done with the show, having been a fan of season one and two, even prior to knowing that I would be on this season. So there were things that happened in those two seasons as a viewer that I was cheering and, and screaming no and that shock factor and I and I want to keep that true to being a part of it and knowing some of the things that the, the public doesn't know without spoiling it for the public. How about this question? You can't spoil this one. What do you think is the secret of success for the last ship? Secret of success for the last ship. I mean it is on its third season. It is on its third season and you know it's the writing, the writing staff that they have there is so amazing and the things that they come up with as I was receiving the scripts and reading, I could just visualize everything that was going on and some of the, as I turned the page I kept thinking to myself, oh my god, no! No, that's not happening! Oh, what? It was, from the fan perspective, it was exciting for me to get first-hand knowledge of what was happening. Um, but they're just so good at creating this world and there's so much more to be said because, I mean, we're talking about the U.S. and China in this season, what other countries may be involved, what other perils can lie throughout the world with trying to get this cure out. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that just, it lends itself to so many potential storylines that there's so much to pull from. Because again, we're talking a global scale. It's not something just dealing with the U.S., but how does the U.S. itself get it, get out of this rebuilding stage and reestablish themselves as the dominant power in the world, and yet also help to get this cure to the rest of the world? There's just so much storyline that, that that can be told there. Um, it. The last episode of this season is definitely going to leave that question of like, what's going to happen from here? Where do we go from here? Um, again, not giving away the storyline. It, as a as a viewer myself and a fan of the show, when I read that, I was thinking to myself, where do they go from here? Because this is just so crazy. The things that happen. Um, it's definitely an exciting show to watch. I mean, Michael Bay is, is a master at creating these worlds of conflict and combat, but yet there's a lot of humanity that goes in to the characters that they create. Um, and there are some characters that get to the point where they decide they have to question their own belief system of right and wrong. And do they lose their way? How do they get back on the right track of, of the, you know, good versus evil, bad and good, uh, and then keep their barometer at bay? Because some, you know, some characters have to make really, really difficult choices that may 
save their lives and sacrifice the lives of others you don't you don't know that's a pretty good sell Al I mean <laughs> You make me feel like I should just binge watch it, but uh, but that's not going to be the case. <laughs> I, I have had a lot of friends that, when I first came across the show, I, saw, I, I watched the first episode and thought, this is shot like a movie. This is amazing. And then, of course, it resonated with me having been in the Marine Corps, which is the Department of the Navy, having been on board some of these vessels, thinking, hey, okay, this, this sounds legit. And then as I started watching I thought they did an amazing job. Who are the advisors that are telling them that this is what they need to do? Because they're pretty spot on with how the vernacular that they use and, and the customs and courtesies that they're displaying. And once I got on the show, first day on set, I see everybody's in wardrobe. Some people are walking around in, in Navy uniforms. And there was this one gentleman with a Navy uniform who had headphones on them, the kind that you wear at Video Village. I thought, why is he wearing headphones? It, he must be an actor just, you know, listening to the scene. I said, so what do you do on the show? I'm the liaison to the United States the Department of the Navy. I said, excuse me? He said, yeah, I, I'm an officer in the Navy. So well, what do you do here? I'm just watching, making sure that what they're depicting on screen is true to the customs and courtesy of the Navy and the military as a whole, which I thought was great because I thought, wow, finally, a show that really wants to get it right. Uh, and I have great respect for that, having been in the Marine Corps. Whenever I see a movie or a TV show where they depict military, specifically Marine Corps, you'd be surprised how many people will pick things apart having been involved in, in the military. And it's good to see when someone's getting it right. Did you kind of wish you were in a military officer uniform for the show rather than... Uh playing politics? Um, there was part of me that thought it would be really cool to put on some boots again and, and wear some camouflage uniform and, and be the, the operative going in in a scene to, to get into combat. And then there was a part of me that thought, you know, that, that's something that I've already experienced in life. Let's, let's see what the politician in me can do. And uh, so yeah, I would, I would between takes, I might wander onto the ship or wander on to the set where they'd be shooting something military and just standing by and watching and thinking, yeah, I would have loved to have done that. But I loved what they end up doing with my character, so I have no, no complaints in that, in that respect. So you stepped onto the Nathan James? Yeah, they have the most elaborate um, soundstage. Had they blindfolded me and walked me onto that soundstage, I would have thought, that I was on board a real vessel. The only difference being that it wasn't moving. <laughs> it wasn't swaying back and yeah. forth. Um, but yeah, it was really, really amazing. The, the uh, attention to detail that they had with recreating a ship on a soundstage it was amazing. How about this? It seems like the, uh, the show, the, the cast is supposed to be all over the, uh, all over the world. Who are the main cast members that you got to work with and who, who is the best joy to work with? Everybody on set, it was such a cohesive group, not just cast, but crew, the writing staff, the producers. It felt very much like a family, so I got a chance to, although I didn't get to work specifically with every character in the, in the series, I got to see them work and got to know them personally, which, which was a real joy. But I did get a chance to work with Adam Baldwin's character, um, Eric Dane, um, Mark Moses, Elizabeth Brown. There were some... Um, uh, gosh, who else? Marissa uh, Breitling, who's one of the stars of the show. Uh, Nestor Serrano. So there were there were people who I've been fans of for many years that I've seen on shows and, and on TV that I got to work with firsthand and got to know. So there were there were some exciting times, and the directors that I got to work with were amazing. I mean, I got to work with Peter Weller, mm -hmm. or Dr. Peter Weller, who, as you know, was the original Robocop. And he directed two of the episodes that I was in. So got got to work with him, which was really, really interesting to see some of the directors that were coming through. Awesome. Let me start wrapping this up. Uh, could you talk about some of your other upcoming projects for yourself? Uh, well, in addition to The Last Ship, I am going to be heading out to New Mexico here in the next month to work 
uh, without giving away title to work on a Marvel um, uh, feature. Wolverine, huh? I cannot <laughs> say. <laughs> I cannot say, but uh, it's definitely an exciting uh, opportunity. Um, I don't know anything about the story because I have no script. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're very tight-lipped at Marvel, which, which I completely understand. Um, and even if I knew the script, I still wouldn't be divulging anything because... Just like on the last ship. Exactly, exactly. But it's exciting. It's an exciting time for me because these la I've been an actor now 13 years, and these last two and a half, three years, I've now got a team behind me that, that's really strong, and, and, and we have, we're in line with the same ideals and the same beliefs. And it is definitely bearing quite a bit of fruit. So I'm getting an opportunity to do some things that I didn't expect to be doing so soon, which, which I'm really happy and, and proud of. Awesome. Hey, one last question. I was look, looking at your filmography. Is it such a relief that you're not playing some kind of police officer or a doctor? <laughs> no. Right. I know somebody, you know, because, and I don't know if it's just an unintentional because of what the time that I spent in the military, but I tend to carry myself in a way, and again, unintentionally, where people come up to me and say, were you in the military? Or were you in law enforcement at some point? I said, I was in the military. Um, and as an actor, oh, you must play a lot of cops and detectives. I'm like, yeah, it's funny you should say that. I do I tend to play quite a bit of law enforcement and doctors. So to get to play, step out of that and play this was definitely a welcomed, uh, a welcomed arrival. All right. Hey, it's been a pleasure. Hey, pleasure. Great, great speaking with you. And, likewise, likewise. Thank and thank, you, so thank you for uh, not giving out any spoilers, I guess. No, no. <laughs> catch. And the season premiere will be this Sunday, the 19th. So it's a two-episode premiere. Um, you know, because of the turn of events, the tragic events that took place, I think TNT did, did right by, by choosing to postpone the, the season premiere. And there were more important things at bay there, so... Absolutely. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.